Look at that. Look at that belt buckle right there. Now, if you want to become a great personal trainer, check out my book, How to Become a Successful Personal Trainer. Look at that. Look at that belt buckle right there. Milo. We should know who Milo is. Today, we're going to help you understand, better understand, threshold force motor unit improvement with Dr. Elwood Henneman. Now, this scientist is a badass. Back in the day, born in the 15, the 1915s, around there. And he was playing around with some cats that are checking out the gas drop and the soleus. Boom! Look at that second gas drop. Soleus is behind it. Soleus is more type 1. Gas drop is about 50-50. And they're playing around with these cat cadavers and they're able to discover the size principle. So on one axis, we have a threshold. Think of that as like the sound. I know there's a little echo in here. Calm down. It's not the best. We're working on it. Force is the volume. So one is like the base, one is like the volume. So when one goes up, so will the other. So we have a motor unit, and we really need to know that term. I challenge everyone to be able to explain this to me in my book. And one of the terms, a professor told me in college, Chris, never forget this, a motor unit. It's a neuron and all the associated muscle fibers. It innervates. Innervation is like that excitement. If you were to put an AED on my chest, boom, and it shocks you, that's innervation. So our brain is going to communicate with muscles. That's neuromuscular communication. So we have type 1, we have type 2. So think of a bunch of foam rollers with me in a bundle. All right, and I'm going to hold this sucker together. Now my brain is going to, via a motor unit, may just innervate a couple of them. The muscle, a muscle will never 100% be type 1 or type 2. It's always a combination. Even your heart has type 2 muscle fibers. So your soleus is predominantly type 1, maybe like 65, 70%. Your gas drop is more like 50, 50, depending on your genetics. Typically, depending on where the muscles are, what they do. So if they're stabilizers, like the rotator cuff, they're going to be more type 1. So what happens is, as the force and threshold go up, we're going to recruit more type 2. These are the X, type 2 X muscle fibers. These are the 1. So how do I like to explain this to our, our interns in our internship program? We're online, we're also in person, we have weekend seminars, check us out, showupfitness.com. I like to draw a line, and this is gonna be roughly 12 reps. And this will be 12 to six reps. So we got this divide. When we're lifting light weights, predominantly type one. When we go to like six to 12, that spectrum is gonna be more type two. Now you go real heavy, one to five, you're gonna get the big powerful X's. Now remember the characteristics of type one versus type two. Type two refers to fast, type one is slow. Example I like to give in class is just tap, dorsiflex, kind of hard to see, but dorsiflex, woo, balance, one on one. Dorsiflex, dorsiflex. Now I want you to do this with your own. How long could you do this for? Long time. Slow twitch muscle fibers right now. Now, if I were to say, I'll give you a million dollars if you can beat me in a race, go! Oh, fast, 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 fast. You're gonna get that burn. Feels good. That burn is the accumulation of those hydrogen ions, lactic. So it's type two. You can't maintain that speed. It's gonna die off and you're gonna go back to one. So when we look at the size principle, boom, boom, type one recruitment. But then when you want to go fast, explosive, type two, but they fatigue quickly. Type 1 can do it for a long period of time. These are smaller in diameter and larger in diameter. 2 is more carbohydrate based, more fat based. These refer to aerobic, this is anaerobic, with oxygen, so they're more capillaries. Notice why these are red. Red indicates blood flow. This would be more white. That's going to indicate not, a, not, not that much blood flow. So, with the size principle, we can use this for how we train our clients. And my question is, what are the three ways that we can engage in type 2 muscle fibers? What do we got? Number one is going to be heavy weight. Heavy is relative. 
Because a lot of your clients will lift a weight they've never done before and be like, wow, that was heavy as they did it for 15. But let's take a look at the size principle. That's gonna be right around here. So really, you're still getting your type one muscle recruitment. I like to say this is like a 70% going down. When you can get 15 reps, it's about 65. When you can do 20 reps, it's 50%. 50% of what you're capable of. What would happen if you had 50% of an exam? It's an F. This would be 85 to 100%. These are based off of your percentage of rep maximum. But we don't want to go heavy with that one right away. Not because you're going to get big and bulky. It's because you need to strengthen the ligaments and tendons. So that's why we start with movement competency on the bottom. Take the patterns, the squat, hinge, unilateral, push, pull, press, carry, whatever you want to do, and start light on the pattern. We don't need to do an overhead squat assessment and check off, oh, you have dysfunction. Oh, upper cross syndrome, fuck, you're gonna die. No, stop scaring people, you're okay. Watch how they move. If you were a basketball coach and you have a bunch of players and you wanna see how they shoot, what are you gonna do? Here's a ball, little buddy, go shoot. And then you're going to help them. You're gonna analyze and then perfect. Don't aim for perfection. You're gonna progress their shot. That's what great coaches can do. We don't need to screen people, make them feel like they're a leper. Upper traps, overactive. Better foam roll, foam roll or die. Get the foam roller out of here. You don't need that. If someone is not shooting perfectly, give them some suggestions. Tuck your elbow in. More legs, there you go, do it again, do it again, do it again. If someone's squatting and they got a little bit of algus, it's okay. Drive your knees out, touch the side of the leg, drive it out, drive it out, there you go. We don't have to foam roll and stretch everything. Where the hell did that come from? I don't know. Great coaches can look at movement and be like, here's a cue, tactile and get engaged, learn to communicate better. So we can go heavy, but we can't do that for at least a month. Focus on strengthening the ligaments and tendons, focusing on movement competency, and just repetition. After a month, we can start getting down to 10, eight, six reps. Then we can start going heavy. So maximal weight, one to 12 reps. That's gonna be type two recruitment. Number two is volitional fatigue. So when I do something, and I go to what I call a face plate, you're doing push-ups, you start getting tired, <laughs> You fall on your face. It's type two recruitment. And the last way is explosive. We don't jump like Tinkerbell. What are we doing? No, stop that. No. We lower back and you jump. You lower back and you jump. Maximal type two recruitment. We can't do that very long. Go back to the Dorsey flexion example. So when people are jumping for 30 seconds, what the fuck are we doing? <laughs> It makes sense when it comes to the physiology, but Instagram says it's cool. Better do what Instagram says. Remember the difference between an influencer and a fitness professional. Check it out in the book, How to Become a Successful Personal Trainer. So let's give you an actual example. Arm farm time, check out those puppets. It's a 110 pound dumbbell if you can't see that. So if I want to get my type two, go heavy, uh, 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 get about eight to 10. That would be type two recruitment. Great job. That's how you're gonna grow and stimulate your muscles to go through hypertrophy. You gotta go heavy, you gotta go fast, and you gotta go to fatigue. So here's what fast will look like to get optimal motor unit recruitment. Brace your core, squeeze tight. So notice how that speed was faster than me just doing the reps. That would also engage my type two muscle pattern. So we need to go through a needs analysis and assess the client. What is your goal? If you're an athlete, should you be going to volitional fatigue? Eh, you wanna get jacked? We can still grow muscles by looking at the mechanism of hypertrophy. Tension, which is the load. How under tension as well. Damage, which would be the volume, but also then of all the stress. So athletes, we're gonna train one way. General population, another one. What we do at Show Up Fitness is we implement the size principle based on the individual to optimize their programming and their goals. So to review, head of the size principle, you need to know this. What? My client's not 
not going to ask me about Hanuman. Christ's not going to ask you about Milo either. They're not going to ask you about the 206 bones of the, of the body, 650 of the muscles. What that big fucker right there is called gastrocnemius. Woo! But when you know it, you're confident. And when you're confident, you just exude that to your client when you're going through the assessment. If you want to become successful in this arena of fitness and wellness, you got to understand the basics. And head in size principle, we have threshold on the y-axis. I always, I was taught this in high school. X, you're on your back like you're having sex. Ooh, PC, better censor that one out. This is the x-axis, this is for force. As we go up in weight, the heavier the load. 65, 70, 75, 80, 85, 90, 95, 100. More motor unit recruitment. A single neuron cell and all the associated muscle fibers and innervates. That's a motor unit. You know the difference between type 1 and type 2. So if you want to optimize your results, your client's results, understand the size principle. Make sure to like and subscribe. Follow us on Instagram. We got Show Up Fitness, Show Up Fitness Internship. If you want to become a great trainer, showupfitness.com. And most importantly, your favorite trainer with a belt buckle, check out my book, How to Become a Successful Personal Trainer. We will help you no matter where you are. All you got to do is show up. Woo! Make sure to like and subscribe. Follow us on Instagram. We got Show Up Fitness, Show Up Fitness Internship. If you want to become a great trainer, showupfitness.com. And most importantly, your favorite trainer with a belt buckle, check out my book, How to Become a Successful Personal Trainer. We will help you no matter where you are. All you got to do is show up. Woo!